William Pitts, 12 years. Anyone there? This is definitely the Twilight Zone. Hey, so as some of you guys might know, I'm a music teacher and I found that one of the best ways that I can process the whole transition to online learning and teaching is to write a song. So I wrote a song. I'd like to share that with you guys now. Here we go. All right, y'all tune in. We're about to go live with Skid Sheetless, and we're going to try to help some teachers become better at sharing their information with their students without all the paper. We're gonna have some alternatives too, but our main goal for this session is to look at some interactive ways that we can allow students to complete information or items that you would normally supply via a worksheet through the interactive realm and I'm going to show you some tools that you can use online as well as one or two that you can use offline so stay tuned we'll be right there is crying over spilt milk and then there is bawling over the ice cream truck we have all been frustrated with the many sacrifices we've had to make throughout the coronavirus quarantine but one little girl from the valley perfectly sums up what we're all feeling Team 12's William Pitts dissects her now viral video and catches up with her family. Hey, Will. Four-year-old Blake's coronavirus meltdown has been seen around the world because really, she's just a smaller version of all of us. We explained kind of the shutdown, you know, dance classes would be done for a while and jujitsu would be done. And when we mentioned dance class, Blake lost it. Lost it. Yeah, everything in this world has Blake didn't just lose it. She launched into an epic rant, one that we can all relate to. The ice cream truck is shut down. That ice cream truck line sent another kid crying. And that water truck place is shut down, which is my favorite part. We can't go anywhere. Oh, it's not even McDonald's, which is my favorite restaurant. The biggest tears ever. Blake's dad tries to correct her. You can pick up McDonald's in the drive-thru. Yeah. You can't. You can. You can go in the drive thru but you can't go in the playground. Yeah, it's just really frustrating. She went off for about seven minutes, and I caught, I pulled my phone out about two, three minutes into it. Since posting it, the video has gone crazy online. Thousands and thousands of views. Probably because if adults could cry and yell at the virus, we all would. Some of us probably did. We all thought we'd be out of it by now. Yeah. So for it to still be there, I think we're all like in the same like she was three months ago. And the only thing that, that is open is nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Out of the mouths of babes, right? Why would you come around to people if they don't want to come around to them? After three and a half minutes, Blake finally started accepting it. And the virus took a back seat to more important things. But we're doing it so everybody can be safe, right? Well, tomorrow I'm going to be able to put in my neck. And 
Blake has one bit of sage advice for all of us. How do we cope with months of lockdown? What do you do to not be bored? What do you do? Play on your iPad. Not a bad idea, but only because there's not an ice cream truck around. William Pitts, 12 News. <laughs>
usage. My name is Jim Conklin. I am the instructional technology staff developer here at Island Tree School District in Levittown, New York. Uh, I was a classroom teacher for many years, 15 years, taught math and science. Uh, fifth grade, my class was one-to-one -one with the uh, iPad for three years. Last year was the first rollout for grades six through eight. And then this year, we rolled out uh, all Chromebooks through the, uh, to the ninth and twelfth, ninth through twelfth, twelfth grade. So, and the fifth grade in the middle school here also has Chromebook carts in each classroom, so they use them. Two summers ago, when I was uh, asked to uh, help with this whole process, we were looking into something for teachers that use PDFs in their classroom. When uh, we started to go Chrome, uh, we discovered Notable PDF, which eventually turned into uh, to Cami. Last year was that first year that we actually started doing that, using, using Cami. A lot of times uh, teachers in the district uh, are assigning uh, PDFs through Google Classroom. Some individual work, some, uh, some collaborate on PDFs. It goes across different classrooms, uh, you know, foreign language, social studies, English language arts, all fine uses for, for the program since you know, they've, they've used PDFs for so long. It's difficult, to, you know, a, a, a big rollout like we did in the district. So there was there was a lot, sort of, for teachers to digest, for students to digest, and you know, learn all the ins and outs of the of the Google applications. You know, I think students are, are, are those those digital natives that we talk about. They're growing up in a world where you know this is all very common to them. So it was probably more more of a challenge to get the uh, you know the, to get the teachers comfortable with uh, tools like Cami and you know other Google applications. Um, but yeah, it was it was a process, just like anything else. One of the things I do that's part of part of my role here, I, I do uh, I do training sessions. I push into classrooms. I'll do uh, you know when the teachers get uh, get coverage throughout the day. I'll run mini workshops and train them in different different tools like Cam. Yeah, I think I think the teachers overall feel comfortable using the program. I think it's a, a simple tool um, that makes annotating. PDFs uh, user friendly. Check it out and let me know what you think. Dad, I don't know how to get into Google Classroom. Google it. You know the rules. We're going to act as if we are really in school. At school, do you guys just get to go in and out the refrigerator as you please? No, you don't. So get out the kitchen. Your lunch is at 1115. Hello, Miss Hawkins. Hey, this is Mrs. Jones. Hey. Sit down. Don't you come over here to my desk. Hello, Miss Hawkins. This is Mr. Jones, LeBron James' father. And first off, I just want to say, God bless you. Can you please forgive me for all the times I refused to listen when you tried to warn me about how bad my child really is? Y'all better be in there doing your work. I know that. How long do we have to do it? Until this period is over. How long is that? However long it takes me to finish my show. What? What's something I can do for extra credit? I don't know. Do the dishes. And don't interrupt me again. I'm in my planning period. Hello, Ms. Hawkins, this is Mr. Jones. I know this is about like the, I don't know, 13th time that I've called you today, but... Get down! Do y'all act like this is school? Huh? Calm down. If y'all keep this up, I'm gonna call you real teacher. Hey, Ms. Hawkins, it's Mr. Jones again. Uh, I'm not sure if you got my last few messages, but I also emailed you. Hey, give me a call when you can. All right. Oh, Mama, I need you to come over here and substitute for me all next week, please. What do you mean you can't leave the house? How about this? Two words for you. Retirement home. Hey, um, Mr. Jones again. Your phone is probably not working. I don't know if it's the quarantine or something that got your service out, but just give me a call back. Thank you. All right, look, y'all getting on my nerves. So recess, go outside. And after that, get suited up and go back outside because it's PE time. Ms. Hawkins, listen, I don't know what I got to do to get in touch with you. I don't know if I got to find a pigeon, duct tape a little note to him and send him off to you. But listen, can you please just call me back? 
All right, I got a math problem for you. Now, if daddy's been locked up in the house for 15 days, times three hours a day for teaching y'all, multiplied by five hours a day of watching Netflix, divided by two hours of sleep, divided by 11 more hours of him having to clean up after y'all, how many glasses of wine does daddy have to take so he doesn't lose his damn mind? Miss Hawkins, can you please answer the phone? I need you! Dad, can you help me with this one? Let me see it. Oh, yeah. You gotta use the polygamy serum on that one, son. Think you mean Pythagorean theorem? No, I know exactly what it's called. Polygamy serum. I, I took it in school. I, I'm the one teaching you. I think I ought to know. No, it's definitely Pythagorean theorem. Well, whatever, Goodwill Hunting. Just use it. Who's Goodwill Hunting? Glad you asked. It's actually your next lesson. Alexa, play Goodwill Hunting. Come on, y'all. Hit the lights. Hey, hey, listen, 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 listen. This is the last time I'm gonna call, I promise you. I just need to know if, do you by chance have a key to the school? Cause I need to, I need to just go there and drop some stuff off uh, for the next 11 days. All right, y'all, come here. Woo. What's that? Oh, just a vaccine I got off of YouTube. Y'all taking y'all's butt to school tomorrow. I can't take this no more. Bend over. Alexa, Google the polygamy serum. I think you mean Pythagorean Theorem. Shut up, Alexa! Alright guys, so let's take a look at TeacherMade. I'm going to show you how you can get started creating your own digital worksheets. Alright, so when you're in your account and you sign in, You'll land here, your landing page. You know, your landing page will look like this, except your page, if you're new to using TeacherMade, it'll be empty. Right under here where it says My Worksheets, all of this will not be there until you create all of your awesome documents and assignments. So let's get started. You're going to click Create Worksheet. Once you click Create Worksheet, you'll be able to give your document a title, a description, and a background. In the description, you can describe it as well as link it or use any goals or standards that you want or that you're trying to use for your assignment. Anything that you'd like to describe your worksheet, place it there. Our goal for today is to just understand and be able to apply the tools of TeacherMade, you know, to create these awesome digital worksheets. So I'm going to add my worksheet. I've already downloaded a PDF file and it's here. So I'm just going to drag and drop this file into the worksheet backdrop box here. And once it's populated, you'll see all of the pages here. Now, once again, once you've uploaded something, um, you can upload up to about 12 pages. Um, you can upload images and all different file types. Um, I think I have that listed somewhere in, in the document that I'm going to share with you guys. So, okay, once you see all of the pages there, this is where you get to choose what pages you want to go into the digital file world. So I want both of these pages. If you didn't want both of the pages, you can just click on it. And once that red frame disappears, you'll know that that page is not going to go into the created worksheets. OK, so but I want all of my pages to appear. So I'm just going to bring this and we're going to go to click on the create worksheet button here in the blue. So once you create your worksheet, now you're in the edit worksheet screen. Once you're in the edit works, worksheet screen, you'll be able to make the magic happen here. So you'll also see a menu bar in the toolbar. And then our menu bar is here. And our toolbar is here. So it's pretty rich and full of icons that have things like horizontal toolbars. When you click on your cursor, it changes to crosshairs. You're also able to draw on the background images. For example, if I wanted to add a text box into this document, I could just click on this T and with the box around it, and then it would create a box wherever I wanted my students to type. It would allow them to type in that area. Now, a quick hack is that you can hit the Control D, and that'll allow you to make a copy of that box or duplicate that box. And your responses, you know, it'll be a lot easier for you to create those response options for your students. So when you make those copies, you can just drag and drop them wherever you want them to be placed. So you can make a uniform set of text boxes for responses. So once we've done that, 
Um, we can also choose what type of answer um, style that we want it to be. So this one will make it a short answer. And this is where you can, and afterwards you can select the number of points that you want associated with um, this answer choice. And you'll click Save Changes and continue to do so throughout your worksheet. So for every tool on the toolbar, the process is pretty much the same. Um, you can click on the draw, edit, save, and then go ahead and explore the toolbar if you want after this session. But um, there are several different types of activities, several different answer styles that you can choose from in the Teacher Made app. Um, when you're done with the session, hopefully you'll take some time and go through and navigate through the navigation bar on the screen. But I'm going to go ahead and click on my um, worksheets here, and you'll see a list of all of the worksheets that I have created. And you can just select any of those that you want to either assign or print out. And you'll just go to the right side of your screen and find the blue action button. And once you click on the blue action button, the selection menu appears. Now you can return to editing your worksheet if you choose. You can change the name or the description. You can also make a copy. You can preview. And you can also delete your worksheet if you choose to. Now when you want to assign the worksheet to your students, you use the action menu as well and click assign. And that's all there is to it. I mean, you're on your way to making your digital worksheets. You're a master now. Hi, every, oh my, mute your mics, mute your mics. Hi guys, hi, so excited to see you, hi. Oh yeah, you have a dog, yeah, she's so cute, aw, hi puppy. Oh, you have a dog, well, don't be careful with your, wow, you have a cat, aw, everyone has pets to show, awesome. You have a lizard, you have a snake, nope out. Jordan, do you want to try and maybe like turn your turn your camera up so that I'm not looking up your nose? No, no, no. I you don't this is kind of like my office. You don't need to see the rest of my house. Oh, you don't have to ask if you can go to the bathroom. You can just go. It's your house. But wash your hands. No, don't bring your computer into the bathroom. I don't no one needs to see that. No. Nope. All right. Happy Wednesday. It's Thursday? Wow. Sorry. The days are kind of blending together here. Yes, I do see you have your pajamas on today. Cool. Oh, you have pajamas on too. Yeah, they're SpongeBob. Ooh, yeah, rainbow unicorn pajamas. Wow, everyone's yelling what their pajamas are. Okay, awesome. All right, I have a huge announcement. I'm so excited to share. Oh, you can't? Okay, well, my headphones are plugged in. You can't hear me, so. Hello? 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 Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? All right. So everybody sees this right here. What we're going to do is... Oh, it's backwards? You, okay. So let's try it like this. Is that better? So that assignment is going to be on Google. Your mom has a question? No, 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 no. You don't, you don't need to take me to your mom. It's no, no. We're in the, okay. Hi, Mrs. Clark. Yeah. Do you think that we could talk later? Guys, we're not, we're not taking our time to talk about Minecraft right now. No, no, I, I do not play Minecraft. So no, on the Minecraft, let's talk about it later. Let's focus. No, no to Pokemon too. We're not talking about Pokemon right now. All right, hey, so Jess. can you? I'm literally teaching a class right now. Oh my, whoa! Hi guys, sorry about that. Yeah, no, this is my fancy office when everyone else is being so loud in my house. <laughs> Talk about fractions during... Who, who is listening to Post Malone so, like, is that necessary? Ow. So just apply what we've been talking about for the last 30 minutes or so and put that work. Oh, you you just logged in. So you didn't you didn't hear any of that, that lesson there. Awesome. Okay, so I'll just go over that again. Yep. Mm -hmm. Wow, you guys are all talking at the same time. It's like we're actually in our classroom. <sighs> I miss you guys. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, Backpacks is another new ed tech startup, and it's an auto grading tool that allows you the ability to be able to grade assignments in a matter of seconds. Now, it uses um, AI technology in order to do this. There are some different quirks about it um, because it still is in uh, a new phase, but I'm really impressed by what I've seen so far as far as how it's helped some teachers um, get information out quickly to their students and get feedback from the answers that their students have, have supplied in, in the documents. So this is ideally for anyone grades K through 12. They do have a free version and a paid version. Um, I've only used the free version of this, so I can't tell you any information about the paid version. But like I said before, it's an auto grade um, tool that allows you to grade assignments quickly. Um, it gives students instant feedback based on what you've listed as the requirements um, for the documents. Um, you can gain some insight into student performance. So you can place this either in a portfolio or on your list so you'll know kind of what to work on as far as mastery skills and things like that with your students when you're trying to go back over lessons and, and information for rem remediation. So let's take a look at signing up. Now, one thing I did like about um, backpacks is that they do have um, some single sign on features that they're working on as far as being able to sign in with your Google accounts, your Microsoft accounts and things like that as well. And they're also working on integration with a number of LMS programs like Google Classroom, Canvas and Schoology. So when you go to log in or create an account, you have two options to either join as a student or join as a teacher. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on join as a teacher. And like I told you before, they do have some single sign on options where you can sign in either through Facebook, Google, or your Microsoft account. So since I'm already logged into one of my Google accounts, I'm gonna go ahead and click. And it's taking its poor time. All right, and we'll just accept the terms and services here. All right, so once I get ready to sign in, it's automatically gonna ask me, do I wanna connect my Google Classroom? So if you already have a Google Classroom set up, you would just go ahead and click on connect Google Classroom and all of that information would merge together there and your student information will be um, imported as well. Now, if you don't have that, you can go ahead and create your classrooms manually. I'm going to do that just for the sake of example. And we'll do eight and I'll just click create. Now, once you start, it gives you a brief um, summary of what you can expect from backpacks. And it's only like 42 seconds. All right, so I'm gonna close that out there and we'll just go to my content. So from my content, you're able to either create a new assignment, import some assignments in some of the file formats that they accept are PDFs, um, image files such as JPEGs, PNG, or GIF files. You can import those in as well. And you can also email them. And this is one feature that I do like about them is their magic feature, as they call it. You can email them an assignment and they'll do it for you. So this is a part of them being a new startup. They're kind of trying to figure out what are teachers wanting and what do they need and what do students need to effectively use this tool in education. So I would take advantage of it. Hey, what can you lose by allowing them to kind of help you do your worksheets? So that's one of the best features that I, I think I like with this program so far. And you can also choose some of the ready-made assignments. You have some teachers that have created assignments. You have some backpacks staff that have created assignments. 
and they placed it on the portal here for you to use. So you can take a look at some of those items. Now, um, they are in, in the process of expanding this information. So it, you may be limited as to what you can find, but that's where a lot of the information that you share with them as far as helping you create assignments or worksheets will come into play. We can kind of build that, that library that they have. So here are some demo examples here. So I'm just gonna click on one just to give you an idea. And this is where the students would fill these areas out and they've already done the, the bulk of the work for us. And this is just to give you a dynamic of how extensive the questions can be. You can actually use this for a math class where students can work out equations and different things like that. Now, the students won't have access to this, but this is the answer key that you're going to create or the answers that you're gonna insert so that when the students do take the assessment or the test or complete the homework assignment, it grades it for, for you. So I'm gonna go back to the preview mode. Now, if I wanted to assign this, I could choose to either assign it to a class that I've created, or if I were connected to my Google Classroom, a list of any of my Google classes would appear in that list. So you would just select one of those classes and it would shoot that assignment directly to those students that are enrolled in that class. Now here you have your dates that you can place on here for when you want it open or when you want the assignment due or completed. Um, you also have the option to add options for late submission. So if you're giving them a two or three day grace period, you can add that in this bottom area as well. Um, you also have the option to allow or not allow students com to complete the assignment online. Um, if you want them to just do it by paper and then take a snapshot of it and, and email it to you, you can still grade it using the, um, the AI technology barcodes that are printed on the sheet. Um, you also have the option to not show the correct answers as well. And you also have the option to allow students to try that assessment again if you choose to. Okay, once your assignment is complete, you'll need to assign it to a class and print the handout so that it can be autograded. You'll open the assignment from the My Content page and use the Assign button to adjust the class and the due date. Now, you can also toggle back and forth to allow students to view or not view the correct answers after they submit their work. To print the handout, you'll open your assignment from the Assigned Work page and click on the printer icon. There you'll be able to preview your handout before you print it, and you'll be able to look and make sure everything looks correct. Now this means making sure that the four RU codes are in the corner of your pages, and there's also a um, barcode located at the bottom of your page. You'll need these five key markers on the page in order to make sure that the assignments are auto-graded. So let's take a look at how your students are going to upload their finished assignments. So. Once they get ready to finish their work and they finish the worksheet and everything like that, there are a couple different ways that they can upload their assignments back to Backpack. One, the students can complete their assignments online without leaving Backpacks by choosing Complete Online. And the next option is that they can complete it in a traditional way where they may print out the form and fill it out and then scan that option with either a mobile device such as a phone or a tablet and upload that um, back into Backpacks. Um, a lot of times in the remote setting, this, this works for some students. Some people just have to write things out. I know I have to write some things out that I work with also. So no matter which option the student chooses though, they can review the answers before they submit. So if they upload via the mobile device um, based off of the answers that they've written before they submit it to the teacher, it will allow them to review the answer submissions. And if something didn't scan correctly, they can go in and make those changes if they need to. Once a student is enrolled in a Backpacks Assignments class, what they'll do is make sure that the printout that they receive has all of the RU codes listed, as well as the barcode at the very bottom of the page. Once they get ready to do their assignments, they'll make sure that their work shows and appears in the show work area and make sure that only their answers appear in the answer area so that when they submit their answers, the AI technology can pick those answers up correctly. So 
So as far as engagements, I think teachers will find it easy to create your assignments and, you know, use the results that they get from those assignments. Um, students, they may grow kind of weary of, of retrieving, you know, login codes and things like that from their email to begin each session. But um, the power of instant feedback, you know, it'll outweigh all of that. As far as all of that, as far as um, pedagogy is concerned, or um, as far as pedagogy is concerned, results are displayed in a variety of ways. They should kind of show a clear picture of what the student's learning outcome and what their workspace can be, you know. Um, and it allows you to review a lot of um, information in a detailed way, you know, as far as your thought, thought processes and things like that. So um, the questions that can't be linked to any skills or tracked over time, that's the only um, downside that I kind of saw to this, but who knows where it may go to in the future. Now, as far as support goes, the Help Center is stocked with a number of articles and videos. They also have an, a searchable um, option on their page. It's called the Instant Answer section, and that's included on every page that you go to. So wherever you are on their um, platform, you don't have to feel lost. You have that help option where you can go and just type in a sample word based on what you're trying to do with this tool in that instant answer section. So that's it for backpacks there. So My son swallowed a watch battery at home. Please use this fork and clothespin to inspect his poop until we find the battery. <laughs> Check it with the what? A fork and a clothespin. <laughs> well, no. Can you please help my son clean his nose out before getting his picture taken? Dude. But first of all, that's nasty. So, uh, no. Can you please track when my daughter has her period and mood changes that come with it? <laughs> they got a little app for that. Don't they have an app now? They do. You, did. you better download that app. Son is under stress when he takes assessments. Okay. Could you please squeeze his head while testing? <laughs> okay, you go squeeze my head while I come in here and teach. Squeeze his head? Squeeze what his head. What am I doing? Do squeezing the answers out? My daughter has full moon insomnia and will be absent after every full moon. Please excuse the assignments on those days. Absolutely not. You take a little werewolf. Uh, she got to make up her work. She can get her work early. Uh, she can get it, whatever. You check to see if their child is wearing underwear every day. Who sends them to school? No, you know if you had on drawers or not. And you should know if your child have on drawers or not. You need to be a better parent. I am not that child parent. I'm their teacher. Oh. Can you smell my son to tell him? Absolutely smells, not. I don't think he should Absolutely not. Often. Absolutely not. I, mean, I don't even know what you said. I'm not smelling your child. Please give my son credit for the essay. I know he did not turn anything in, but he wrote it in his head and should get credit for that. No, ma'am. Tell about grading in my head. Daughter is easily distracted. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to teach her in a tunnel or a tent to minimize it? And nobody got no tunnel or no tent. What you need to do is go ahead and homeschool her, take her out into the woods, in the wilderness, and buy you a little tent, go camping. I'm not afraid about, no, a tunnel. If you want their daughter to come to class, you will need to compliment her shoes and her hair daily. Absolutely not. If I want her to come to class, I'm just going to tell you that your daughter needs to come to class. So you need to make sure she come. I don't care if she has on gladiator sandals. I don't care if she got on Jordans. I don't care if she got on a rope with a piece of cardboard tied on the bottom of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, ma'am. Can the school buy a trampoline that only my no. son can use? Oh, no. If he misbehaves, he could just leave and go bounce on his trampoline for half an hour. Oh, okay. So when you show out, you get to go play. That's <laughs> what you're saying. Yes. Absolutely not. Look, because at some point today, and I probably know who you are as well, your son, I want to use him as a trampoline, okay? I don't have time for that. Absolutely not. We not. We don't. First of all, this school ain't got no trampoline for no other kids. We ain't even barely got no real working monkey balls. And you want us to buy a trampoline. Anybody want just for your child. And so he can go play when he act up. So you're not willing to pick up someone's son on the way to school? Do I? No, we have buses. All you do is you go, let them stand on that corner. You find where that bus ride is. Or the school bus will pick you up. I don't care if I live next door to you. The answer is no. 
Jesus, I used to think these kids asked some silly questions, but I see where they get it from. I honestly see where they get it from. All right, so let's take a look at our last and final tool, which is Nearpod. I'm sure a lot of you have already been using Nearpod, but Nearpod is an interactive presentation and assessment tool that creates a platform for active student engagement and collaboration. Um, it also provides a means for assessing student growth in, in more real time. Um, this is more geared towards students of grade levels K through 12, I've even used it for some higher ed courses that I've, I've taught and things like that. Um, there are free and paid subscriptions. I have to tell you, I've used both of those and the paid subscription, the advantages of those are being able to have your own school libraries and share different content across the board. There's a host of resources that are provided to you through that paid resource as well. So, even though the free version is awesome, the paid version will give you a lot um, as far as resources available for you and your, your teachers. All right, so let's take a look at Nearpod and how it works um, with what you may already be using. Now, one of the great things that I do like about um, Nearpod is that it integrates with a lot of the software pieces that we're already using, for instance, um, single sign-on pieces like Clever, ClassLink, Google, Microsoft, were able to use the login credentials or authenticate through those different pieces so that your users can only, are only required to log in once instead of, instead of having to remember two or three different passwords. Um, they also integrate very well with LMSs such as Canvas and Google Classroom, um, Microsoft Teams, Schoology, Blackboard, um, they also integrate very well with the messaging system called Remind. Um, if you're needing to share some assignments through the Remind app, you can just link in, find the assignment, and shoot it out via the contacts that are available. And sometimes those contacts may be a cell phone or an email or what have you. But I do like the integration piece that Nearpod has, and I think they've really set the bar high as far as integration with a lot of tools that we're, we're already using. So can you teach with this tool? That's the main thing. That's what you are waiting on, the meat and potatoes of this. All right, so teachers, they can use Nearpods to kind of support student learning in a variety of ways. And that's one of the reasons I really like um, this platform. It gives students the opportunity to, to interact and, and provide immediate feedback, you know, by having them draw on say a map or a diagram or responding to a poll question, posting a note on the collaboration board. Um, they can also add images to the collaboration board, take a multiple choice or true false quiz. These are all things that can be done quickly within the Nearpod platform. You're also able to import a number of things like PowerPoints, PDFs that you've already created. So you're not losing that connection to some of the older material that you may be familiar with already, you can still use that content. I like that you're able to integrate different things like videos from either video platforms like YouTube or from the video library that they have available um, with some, some other um, links that they have with other third party programs as well. I think um, they have some science videos from Dave on there that are really interesting but you'll have to get in there and really check it out. Um, it really helps the students review a lot of their key learning concepts by either watching videos, reviewing the notes that they have, or actually being able to take their own notes. That was one of the key features that I saw in Nearpod when I first started using it, is that I was able to use the little side area to add my own notes for my own um, keeping, and I could go back and refer to those as needed. Um, it lets the kids design their own slideshows, um, allowing them to teach others. I know that was something that my mom always taught us when we were younger, 
a lot of times we learn by doing and by teaching others. So they could definitely use this platform for that purpose as well. Um, another thing that I liked about the Nearpod platform is that it incorporates a lot of social and emotional learning in digital citizen, citizenship skills um, with a lot of pre-created lessons that they have on empathy, cyberbullying, and internet safety. Um, I've been preaching SEL for, for several years. I remember I used to go around to several schools, and some of you all may remember me coming around and doing a lot of cyber safety and SEL sessions because at the end of the day, um, our, our students' mental wellness is just as important as the academia um, side. So it's important that we make sure that we try to help our students as much as possible as far as that's concerned. So let's keep on moving. So what the students label planets in the solar system or re respond to um, poll questions on a climate change, watch a video on how to find the volume of a cylinder, review notes on different parts of speech, or submit um, an open-ended response to analyzing some primary source. Um, they're interacting with content. You know, at the end of the day, they're actually being engaged. They're not just sitting there listening to a lecturer speak or, or passively give them information. They're allowed to become a part of their own learning experience. So they're kind of constructing their own instruction. So um, there, like I said, there's a host of material for you available within the Nearpod library. It's available for modification. So if you need to make changes or tailor it to what you may be doing at your school or at your grade level, you can change that as you need to. You can remove, edit, delete, whatever you need to do to make it you know, sustainable for what you need it for. Um, you have teachers that use Nearpod for whole lessons. You have some that use it for individual remediation for some students. Um, they have some that may use it for review and different things like that. I like that it has a quick formative assessment piece. You're able to get instant feedback. It gamifies a lot of the activities. So the students don't really feel like they're, um, well, they feel more so like they're, they're playing a game, but they're actually learning while they're playing that game. Um, you also have three different ways that you're able to teach the content through the Nearpod platform. You're able to do live participation. Um, a lot of times, um, you can do this remotely where everyone is using the, the tool at the same time, or you can do student pace where the student can kind of guide how they go, or you can do the front of the class platform if you're using, say, a display unit or a smart board and you wanted to display it and you all work on it as a whole um, class to kind of re review material. Um, you're able to convert a number of different documents. Like I told you earlier, you can import things like your PowerPoints that you already have, your PDFs that you already have, um, Google Slides, YouTube videos, any other video files, and I think MP4 is the form, file format for the videos. And then you also have a host of over 9,000 different pre-made interactive lessons that you can choose from or videos and virtual tours. You don't have to start from scratch. You can upload any of your favorites from any of those platforms that I just mentioned. And not only does it look really cool, but you're also able to know where your students are in their learning and mastery levels. You're able to boost the student participation with the collaborative activities, the formative assessments, using features like the virtual reality, the polls, the boards, the game-based quizzes. You're able to kind of get students inside and insight in real time and in post-session reports that are available. I really like the post-session reports because you're able to look at graphs that dictate the visual representation of how your students are doing. And you're also able to export that information out in Excel or CSV files as well. So when you need to turn that data in or just review that data for the sake of preparing new lessons, you can go back and look at a lot of those post-session reports. Now, the great thing about Nearpod is that you're able to kind of flex between classroom and distance learning or the hybrid learning environment. 
whatever learning looks like this year, and we've seen it look a lot of different ways, you know, um, just from August until now in the last five or six months, you know, you can feel confident that your lessons are gonna work in any of those environments when you use them as tools. So regardless of your device type or your availability, um, the same lesson, lesson can shift with, with your plans. Now this is a web-based tool, so that is the only um, downfall. You won't be able to utilize it um, offline, but you are able to, like I said, use any device, whether it's a mobile device, a Chromebook, a Mac, a Windows, Linux, open, open source machines. You can use it on all of those. And it allows you to, like I said, teach all platforms, whether it's remote learning, distance learning, face-to-face, -face, or if you want the student to work on it individually, they can. So those are some um, really cool features about it. So let's check it out. So you're able to invite participants to join your lesson via a simple login code. And the login code allows you to either email it or share or copy that link, or you can click on Google Classroom if you have that link to your um, account or if you're logged in, or you can click on the rem remind option. You're also able to create, download, or purchase lessons for classroom use. Now, if you have the paid subscription from your district or you have the paid subscription that you purchase individually, you can access a lot of lot more um, as far as resources. There are a number of resources that are available on the free um, option as well. All right, you also have options for student response um, that include things like multiple choice, short answer drawings, um, virtual reality, quizzes, the collaboration board. Now, I don't often do this, but the student responses can be shared to the entire class. Um, a lot of times I don't, I don't do that though, but you do have the choice of sharing um, responses with your class. So maybe if you all are doing something like a poll or something, that may be where you wanna share responses. But as far as quizzes and things like that, I don't, I don't tend to share that information with the entire class. Students can also post comments, like almost like a post-it note on the virtual bulletin board or the collaboration board that they have. And that kind of gets students to brainstorm and share ideas and different things like that. It's similar to um, the Jamboard. I don't know if any of you all have had a chance to kind of take a look at it but it's a personal whiteboard space where they're able to put anything from notes to images and different things like that. And as I mentioned earlier, you're able to view student and class results um, through easily accessible, accessible reports. Um, they make the reports um, really intuitive as far as graphics are concerned, easy for you to understand. And you can also export that information out into Excel spreadsheets as well. Another thing that I like about Nearpod is that they have the ready to run PD that gives teachers an easy way to kind of foster their own lifelong learning. Now I've seen some school districts actually take this content and use it for their PLC groups or their own PD sessions. Um, they pick out certain ones that they want and create somewhat of a playlist. And hey, this week we're going to use this Nearpod and cover this topic. This week we're going to use this Nearpod and cover this topic or from month to month. But you do have a, a repository of different material that you can use or pull from for PD for your teachers. Or the teachers can go in individually and find what they need and keep it moving. As far as customer service and support, they're very extensive on being able to be there to support their users. They have a number of webinars, tutorials, blogs. They're constantly putting out information. When I say I get a call from Nearpod monthly to make sure that, hey, are you okay? Are your teachers okay? Is there anything that we can get you? Is there anything that we can do for you? They have it there. They also have a number of material on um, a lot of other topics. Um, if you're looking here, you'll see where they have information about HyperDocs. They have information about Office 365 and how it works with Nearpod, in addition to some other topics like 
bring your own device and one-to-one -one implementation and different things like that. Some of the things that a lot of districts are going through right now with this um, transition in education that we're going through. So with NIRPOD, you know, teachers, they interact with students and they view student responses in real time. It enables the students to take ownership of their learning rather than just passively viewing, you know, the teacher directed whole class and presentation, the slideshow or the video that the teacher may be showing. It actually allows them to become a part of the lesson. So teachers, they can control the timing or the launch of the homework sessions, you know, in which students will move in their own pace, but the students are actually completing the work or doing the work. Either way, it's easy to see, you know, who it is or who isn't viewing the presentation or who isn't um, completing any of the assignments when you're working in this tool. And so that kind of helps with classroom management as well and reinforces, you know, the appropriate use of technology in the classroom. Um, to account for some downtime when, when peers are waiting to finish responding, it might be a good idea to kind of encourage students to take notes for later review or jot down some things that they may want to ask you if they have some questions and different things like that. Those are some suggestions. Now, as far as pros for this tool, like I've been preaching the whole time, students can actively participate in their education while, you know, teachers, they also get the valuable feedback, you know, on the student learning that's provided through your pod. Now, some of the cons, although they're small, um, I really didn't experience any cons, but some of the cons that I've heard from other instructors is that when they're creating or modifying some of the presentations, it can be a bit time consuming. Um, and, and some of the features may not work on all devices, but they're constantly upgrading and updating things like that. So that may change in the near future, but I really honestly don't have any cons on using the tool, but those are just some of the feedback items that I've gotten from other teachers. Now, the bottom line is, you know, this is an effective tool that leverages the capabilities of one-to-one -one environments and offers both the teachers and the students, you know, a student-paced learning platform that they can use. You know, it provides that immediate feedback that we want as instructors or administrators in the educational field. Um, it lets the teachers know where remediation, you know, would benefit those students and who it would benefit. Um, when students receive quiz scores, they can ask questions in that moment to kind of correct their area, errors that they may have or take notes to strengthen their understanding of the content. So when they come back to that content, they're better prepared to answer those questions related to it. Um, as a different differentiation tool, you know, students can move through the content at their own pace. They can kind of guide their own instructions. Um, students, you know, students may be um, guided a little bit by the teachers. The teachers may choose to assign students different presentations or give them a chance to create their own like we talked about earlier. Um, since the collaboration board shows immediate results to polls and ideas and images and different things like that, students can engage in a classroom discussion and, and upvoting. And this is where you'll get a lot of feedback from some of those students are, that are normally um, more quiet in the classroom or more apt to sit back and not participate. Most of the time, you'll, you'll get that feedback from them um, on the collaboration board in, in the Nearpod platform. So. It's also useful as a homework tool um, or, or when a substitute is present, they can actually start the um, assignment for the students or you can have it set to start for the students. They can access those self-paced assignments on their own device and respond to those open-ended questions that the teacher can review online and use to prepare for follow-up lessons as needed or when she returns. Um, so, when the direct instruction is, is a necessity, you know, Nearpod, it offers an awesome way to kind of increase that student environment and increase that collaboration and in, that engagement that the students um, need so much. Um, it would be nice to see some additional collaborative um, features, kind of like um, the group annotation capabilities or breakout, additional breakout features. Um, for further collaboration and communication. I know they're working on some things like that in beta mode, but those are just some 
feedback moments that I've gotten from other instructors. Um, teachers that are interested in using Nearpod, you know, to its fullest capabilities, they want to um, check into all the resources that they have available. When I say there are a host of presentations, um, tutorials, webinars, professional development, they also have a site blog where they update information constantly. They have several. As far as engagements, um, I feel like the students are able to move through teacher directed or self directed interactive presentations using almost any device, whether it's a mobile device, like I said earlier, Mac, Windows, phone, tablet. They can use any of those devices to access a lot of the Nearpod material that's available. And it gives that teacher that immediate feedback on assessments and polls, and it increases the buy-in of both the instructor and the student. All right, as far as pedagogy, um, the interactive features, they kind of make deeper learning you know, possible during direct instruction. Um, you're able to assign the presentations as self-paced assignments, like I stated earlier, and that kind of empowers the students to feel like they're taking ownership of their learning and becoming um, constructive is as far as their, their learning is concerned. Um, the collaboration and the drawing features, you know, they allow an alternate form of assessment. Everything doesn't have to be true, false, or, or check this box. As far as support, I can't say enough about um, the support that they have. The site, it provides a lot of real-time results and reports, you know, to help monitor the student progress and modify instruction as needed based on those reports. Um, the support that they provide is also extensive for all users, not just the instructors. They have a number of webinars, tutorials, videos, professional development sessions that you can attend. Um, it, it's just overwhelming. Um, they solic solicit a lot of teacher feedback. They wanna know what's not working for you, what's working for you, so that they know how to have their engineers or the de developers work to make this program one of the best ed tech programs that it could be. Um, so, if you ever run up on those, don't be afraid to share what you like and what you don't like. And that's Nearpod.